As leaders, we all have to juggle a lot of different tasks. We have to be disciplined and organized. We must be able to assess our situation and also to look ahead and make a plan, whether that be a plan for today or this week or this month or the coming months. Consider the implications of these Proverbs. Proverbs 10.25 or 10 verse 5 says, He who gathers in summer is a prudent son, but he who sleeps in harvest is a son who brings shame. Proverbs 27 verse 12 says, The prudent sees danger and hides himself, but the simple go on and suffer for it. Today we might say, If you aim at nothing, you will hit it every time. To get things done, we need to plan our days, weeks, and months. Traditionally, we've relied on two kinds of tools to help us do this, the calendar and the task list. Traditionally, these tools have been done on paper, although most people nowadays use software or apps. The electronic versions are more versatile and have additional features, but essentially, they're the same thing as the paper versions. Now, personally, there are four tools that I like to use to keep track of my tasks. I like to use an electronic calendar, a task chart, a week guide, and a written task list. Now, I'm not saying that this is the best way to plan your tasks. This is just what works for me, and it's a system I've been refining for years. So you may have your own system, and if it works well enough for you, then good. But I think there's always room for growth, and if we can improve our system so that we get more done and make less mistakes, then that's even better. So even if you don't adopt my system, maybe it'll give you some ideas on how to make your own system even more efficient, and that will serve you well in your time with the Expositors Academy. So first, let's talk about the electronic calendar. With all the productivity tools available today, calendars aren't as important as they used to be. Still, I wouldn't say they're outdated or irrelevant. I may rely on mine a lot less than I used to, but I still use an academic or electronic calendar rather to help me keep track of two things, occasions and appointments. My Google Calendar reminds me of things that reoccur annually. So these are occasions like holidays, birthdays, anniversaries, etc. I also use it to keep track of appointments. My wife and I keep a joint calendar so we know one another's schedules and can coordinate more easily. This works for appointments that both of us are involved in, like having a dinner with another couple from church, but it also helps us to keep track of one another's individual appointments for better accountability, communication, and mutual support. Moreover, with a joint calendar, only one of us has to input an appointment in the calendar for both of us to see it and be reminded. Of course, we have to tell each other whether we've added an item or, or when we've added an item. So I, for example, don't check the calendar one day and be shocked to find an appointment that I wasn't prepared for. Occasions and appointments. These are the only two things that I rely on my calendar for nowadays. I don't use my calendar to keep track of my tasks anymore. Other tools are much better suited for this, and I'll be talking, talking about those shortly. The last thing I want to mention about this is that I don't even consult my calendar every day. I just have to check my calendar at the start of each week. At the start of each week, I open it up and I download the relevant contents into my task chart. After that, I may not need to open it up again until next week. So, if you have any questions on how I use my electronic calendar, uh, then uh, please uh, email me or contact me through any of the methods that I've given you. Now, I mentioned in uh, passing my task chart. What is a task chart? The task chart is my main task management tool. It's just an MS Excel spreadsheet that I've adapted to my needs, but it's the foundation of my task management system. I use it to lay out my tasks, whether they're tasks that need to be done today or next week or even six months from now. Let me show you what my task chart looks like. So 
So here's my task chart. As you can see, at the top, I have the months and days lined up. Okay, so we're in the month of January. Today is January 25. And I have these lined up in a row. Each day gets its own column. Now it's only the beginning of the year, so the task chart only runs up to December. But in the latter half of the year, I usually start scheduling things for next year. On the left, I have my major categories. As you can see, I organize my life around three fixed points of stewardship. My church, Ayo Rock, the Expositors Academy, and my home. And I just have this fourth category for other ministries, like if I'm invited to teach at another church or do something that is somehow outside of these three focal points in my life. And these categories are color-coded just to make the chart a little bit more visual for me. I prefer this tool to a calendar for several reasons. Okay, firstly, it's more personalized than a calendar. I can create categories for the different areas of responsibility in my life. Arranging the task chart this way helps me monitor whether I'm being active or passive in a particular area, whether I'm meeting a particular responsibility or neglecting it. So very visually, I can just look at my task chart and scroll down, and I can see because of the color coding and the arrangement in rows, I can see um, whether there's a particular color that is conspicuously absent, or maybe I'll be seeing too much of a particular color, and that'll tell me that maybe I need to put more time and effort uh, and attention into other areas of responsibility. I think right now it looks pretty well balanced. I'm doing a lot of uh, things or quite regularly. I am preaching and teaching, which is uh, the green things, uh, the green items. Uh, missions related things are in yellow, and you can see I'm I'm investing in missions as well. Uh, other responsibilities like meetings, uh, fellowship, counseling uh, are in red. And you can see I have regularly those kinds of things as well. As for Thea, uh, teaching for the Expositors Academy is in blue. And then you ha I have uh, admin and development related things like, uh, well, just kind of back, uh, you know, the unseen things that, that happen other than teaching with Thea, and I'm, I, I have those in my task chart as well. And for home, I have things that, you know, I do personally, like exercise. I have my weekly date with my wife. Uh, I have read, talk, prayer time with the kids uh, twice a week, which, which is just me, like reading them stories, talking to them about their day, uh, you know, just spending a particular time with them. Now, this doesn't mean that I only spend time with my kids twice a week. In fact, I spend time with them every day. But uh, this, is, this is the scheduled time that, that is really intentionally set aside uh, for me to have that time of investing in them. Okay, so visually, you can see in my task chart, I, I think it's, it's a pretty well-balanced thing and I'm, I'm investing time and energy into every aspect of my life. And it looks pretty full to me. Uh, and as you can see, uh, in the other ministry category, I don't have anything lined up. And I've chosen to do that. Uh, you know, I get, I get invitations to, to speak at other churches, uh, but I've been turning them down just because I want to, I feel pretty full right now in terms of my, my load. And, and so uh, I'm, I'm focusing on, on these three primary areas of responsibility. Okay, so as you can see, the task chart is very visual. I also like the task chart because it's more predictive than a calendar. I foresee days and weeks that are particularly busy and those that aren't. And this helps me see the best weeks and days to schedule additional tasks. Okay, so for example, uh, if I look at today, I have I have a you know a pretty good amount to do, and I have a lot of meetings uh, in two days. Okay, I have three meetings lined up for the 
for the 27th. And I can see that on the 30th, I don't really have anything scheduled except to study for my cell. So this is um, it doesn't mean necessarily that I have a lot of time to spare on this day. This just tells me that uh, this day is really dedicated to preparing for my cell group or accountability group uh, on, uh, on February 4. Okay, so just uh, you can see just how how easily I, I, this is all laid out. And I even have these notes that I put here so that I just have to scroll my cursor over the, the item and you can see the note that I've made. Uh, so so it's easy to, to just know what, what it is I'm looking at. Also, the task chart is better than a calendar at visualizing a work process. Okay, now in a calendar, I can note down when something is due and when I want to work on something. For example, I can put men's Bible study on Sunday and study for men's Bible study on the Wednesday before that. Now, let me pull up my calendar uh, just so you can visualize this more easily. Okay, so I'm looking at this week, and uh, you know, let's say I have something due here that I need to be preparing for. I can place it as an item, right? Uh, like I said, men's Bible study. And then today, if I want to be preparing for that, I can put another item that tells me to study for the men's Bible study. But as you can see, uh, it's it's really not it's really not. Uh, as visual. It, it's not as easy to read or keep track of. Um, and the thing with the calendar is it always requires you to put a time, uh, which sometimes you're not always able to do. Sometimes your, flexible, your schedule needs to be more flexible than that. Whereas with the task chart, well, let's, uh, let's close this. Now with the task chart, you see, it's all lined up. See, I, I have to prepare for my cell group on February 4, and I can, on the same row, just put an item that says study. And so just by looking at the row, I can see, okay, probably this is telling me to study for this, and I can see uh, how many days I'm supposed to be preparing for this on which particular days. Now, let's say uh, something happens. There's an emergency on January 30 the day when I'm supposed to be preparing for sell, well, I can just easily copy this and move it to the next day, which tells me that I need to spend some more time on the, the 31st because I wasn't able to finish the task on the 30th. And it's just a very simple system. Now, every time that I'm done with a particular day, I just right-click it and I choose hide, and it hides the cell. And so, uh, it just makes things very easy to navigate. Finally, I like the task chart because it's more flexible than a calendar. I can easily reschedule things as I've just showed you. Okay, scheduling of tasks is not only by day, uh, or rather scheduling of tasks is done only by day, okay, not by the hour or the minute. So I don't have to be super specific all the time. Excel also allows me to easily write and review notes on specific tasks. So to create or edit a note, just right-click on the item and choose Edit Note. Or if there's no note, the option to create a new note will show up. To review a note you've already made, just move your cursor over the cell and the note will automatically pop up on your screen. Very convenient, very easy. Okay, so uh, hopefully that's helped you. And if you think that this tool will be helpful in managing your tasks, I highly recommend you try it. As I said, it is the foundation for my, uh, my task management system. Now, having said that, there are limitations to the task chart. 
First of all, it lacks accessibility. It's only convenient to access when I'm seated in front of my computer, not when I'm on the go with my tablet or phone. And even when I'm on my computer, I have so many windows open that I really don't want to create more visual clutter and eat up more of my RAM by having my task chart open all the time. And this means I could open and close my task chart a dozen times throughout the day, which is really uh, inefficient. But more importantly, the task chart lacks structure. By structure, I'm referring specifically to time. It doesn't help me allocate my time very well. It doesn't tell me how much time to spend on a particular kind of task for example, I, should I spend two whole days preparing for my Sunday Bible study? Well, maybe, but maybe not. I have to consider my other ministries in the church and in Thea and even my responsibilities at home. Then I can decide more wisely how many hours to spend preparing for my Bible study, and I need to have at least a general plan for how I will use my hours on any given day. But the task chart doesn't really help me do that. Now, these two limitations don't make the task chart a bad tool. I still think it's a great tool. Um, and in fact, as I've said, this is uh, the most important tool of all the four tools I'm discussing in this segment. That said, these limitations have led me to use two more supplementary tools. Since the task chart lacks accessibility, I also use a task list that I keep with myself all the time. And because the task chart lacks structure, I use a weak guide. Now, let's discuss these two tools in turn, beginning with the task list. After using my task chart for a few years, I was still struggling to manage my tasks. I would still forget appointments and small errands, like replying to an important email or fixing something at home. Now, this kind of thing would happen, especially when I had several things I needed to take care of while I was out of the house, away from the computer. Before leaving the house, I would check my task chart and make a mental list of those tasks that I needed to do all before getting back home. For example, go to class, pick up something at the grocery store, and not just something, but maybe that's a list of 10 different items, and then go withdraw money from the bank, and then uh, drop something off at uh, a relative's house, um, and maybe go meet up with, with um, a friend. Okay? Now, that's a lot to keep in mind. So I would look all the, at, at all that at my task chart, close my computer, leave the house with all that stored in a mental note, but we all know how unreliable mental notes can be. And then I would go through, all, through my day, but when I get back home, I look at my task chart, and, 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 and darn it, I forgot to do one or two of the things I was supposed to do. And that happened quite frequently. I also didn't have a convenient way to jot things down as they came up during the day. So for example, I could be standing in line at the grocery, and suddenly I think, hey, you know, I should call so-and-so about the ministry opportunity next Friday. And I make a mental note to do that once I get home. But by the time I get home, I've completely forgotten about it. And so I miss that opportunity. Here's another example. Let's say I'm in a conversation with another pastor. And I come away from that conversation with three action points. I'm supposed to write this article, uh, contact this person, and organize this meeting. But after a couple of hours, I can't remember the details of what we talked about anymore. So I have to swallow my pride and ask the pastor to refresh my memory and just hope that he also remembers exactly what we agreed I was supposed to do. And, you know, that doesn't happen all the time. I would have written those things down in my task chart, but it just wasn't accessible enough. By the time I was in front of my computer, I had already forgotten about it. So because of that, I decided to keep a task list in a pocket-sized notebook I bring with me everywhere. And this is how I keep track of what I need to do for the day. And to have that info easily accessible anytime, anywhere. So how do I use this task list? Just before I go to sleep at night, I open my calendar and task chart 
really more my task chart. Like I said, I might open my calendar maybe just uh, once a week. So I open my task chart and I write out everything I want to do the next day on my notebook. Okay, I mark the most important tasks with a star. As you can see here, have devil. And these are the things I need to get done today, as soon as possible. Other tasks just aren't as urgent, and I mark those with a circle. Now it's much easier to check my notebook throughout the day instead of my task chart, because like I said, it fits in my pocket. And, and so anytime, whether I'm at home or I'm running chores or I'm in the church, I have my task chart with me in my handy dandy notebook. And I can write down tasks that wouldn't be in my task chart. For example, daily disciplines like Bible reading, prayer, and family devotions. Now, because these are daily things, I, I wouldn't bother putting them in my task chart. And even more than that, small things like replying to an email, setting an appointment with someone, ordering a particular item on, online, or replacing the batteries of my son's toys. Right? These are tiny tasks, micro tasks that... Um, you know, might have pretty significant inconvenience uh, if I don't do them. And so I don't want to forget to do them. Uh, and yet, they're kind of too small and insignificant and, and too numerous, really, uh, to put in my task chart. And yet, if I have my notebook, I can just easily jot them down. For example, uh, I, need, I wrote here on January 17, update hermeneutics class list. And then I have other things like, uh, you know, schedule me teaching midweek prayer service on February, question mark. I had, that's something I had to check. Uh, and I had to send an email. And so these are just examples of little tasks like rewording a particular uh, assignment on Canvas. And these are just little tasks that I can easily jot down in my notebook that would never make it to my task chart. Now, as I go through my day, I mark tasks in one of three ways. Completed tasks get a check mark, like this. Once I finish my Devo, personal Devo, I put a check mark. And that, that's a nice feeling, you know, it just allows you to, to just recognize that uh, the Lord has allowed you to finish another task. And there will be other tasks that I didn't complete and I have to pick up again tomorrow. Or maybe I did do it, but then I just need to do it again. And these kind of tasks get marked with a circular arrow, like a refresh sign, as you see here. And finally, there are canceled or missed tasks, and I mark them with an X. Now, uh, I didn't mark any here with an X, but you can easily imagine, let's say, uh, there was a particular meeting that was canceled. And so I would just uh, mark that with an X, since it was something that wasn't done and wasn't uh you know, reschedule. So that's my task list in my handy dandy pocket sized notebook. Now, as useful as the notebook is, it has the same weakness as the task chart because it lacks structure. It's great for task management, but not for time management. And my recent solution for this is the weak guide. Weak guide. Okay? This is what it looks like. What is a week guide? As you can see, it's a table that has every day of the week and the time slot for all 24 hours of the day. I even have my sleeping schedule uh, you know, written down here. Now, the best way to explain this tool is to talk about its features. Firstly, it represents a typical week. There will be unplanned things that are beyond our control that will disrupt this schedule. Right? For example, you may need to visit a couple whose child is in the emergency room, or your senior pastor may call for a sudden meeting that takes up half your day, and that's unplanned. Even so, this system still works because you should have enough open hours to act as a buffer against such disruptions. And I'll show you what I mean later. Also, the week guide directs me day by day and hour by hour. This is how it gives me a structure to follow. 
and by doing so, it addresses the weaknesses of the task chart and the task list. The week guide also focuses on categories more than specific tasks. So if my task list in my notebook is very specific down to even the minute tasks that I have to do, the week guide uh, focuses on bigger categories, the kind of tasks that I want to do. Here, as in the task chart, you can see that I've arranged this according to my three main areas of responsibility. Okay? In purple uh, are church-related things, and then uh, blue represents things I'm doing for TEA, and then uh, yellow and green represent personal things, things I'm doing for the home. By focusing on categories more than specific tasks, I also avoid getting bogged down in too many details when making this guide. I can use the same guide for as long as my responsibilities generally remain the same. Of course, this is something that I'll probably have to update every semester because uh, while my responsibilities in church generally uh, are the same, month to month throughout the year, it's every semester with the Expositors Academy that brings in uh, new responsibilities or additional responsibilities. And so this is something I'll probably update every six months. Since the week guide is only a guide, there's elbow room for adjustment, but not too much adjustment because then what would be the point, right? If you're just endlessly flexible, then why use a guide at all? So how do you set up something like this for yourself? Now here's one way to do it. First, create a table with the days of the weeks and all the hours in a day. Then, fill out the givens, you know, things that you regularly do and are a non-negotiable part of your week, like sleeping or Sunday services. And then beside that, Create a reference table on the side with a list of all the categories of tasks you want to add to the guide. And this is what I'm referring to over here. So um, I have certain things like uh, my cell group. I want to spend 10 hours preparing for that. Uh, my preaching to class, I want to spend at least four hours uh, for that. My hermeneutics class, four hours. I want to spend at least four hours a week preparing for um, just a, a sermon, not something that's scheduled, but just having always something uh, in, you know, ready just in case there's an unplanned and sudden opportunity to preach, then I'm ready with a sermon that's uh, ready uh, to be preached. Uh, and then I have, have uh, even a breakdown of my the kinds of work I want to do and how many hours to spend. I have the total here. As you can see, I, you know, I generally spend 60 hours working a week. Um, and so now that I have these hours determined, then I can begin to lay out uh, these, these hours on my week guide. So I've created this reference table. Next, I want to fill in, uh, uh, well, having allotted hours for each category, that's step four. Then I want to fill in the table accordingly. And finally, uh, I want to make sure that I allot time for things like meals, chores, commuting, etc. Because, you know, these seem like little things that you, you might not need to put in your schedule, but really they do take time. Like for example, just think about how much time you spend washing dishes. For me, I would say because I'm I'm the dishwasher at home, um, the, I could spend anything between an hour to maybe an hour and a half every day uh, washing dishes, and so that's that's a pretty significant period of time I need to you know to, to actually schedule. One last thing, you're gonna want to print out the week guide and keep it in your notebook at all times. Uh, or, or anywhere where it's accessible. Why? It's because you're, you're going to be checking this throughout the day to help you manage your time responsibly. So 
that's it for planning your tasks. I hope these four tools that I've shared with you, okay, the electronic calendar, the task chart, which is a spreadsheet, the task list in a, a, a pocket-sized notebook, and the week guide will help you uh, to uh, plan your tasks and just be organized in how you allocate time for your different areas of responsibility.